Game 3 NBA Finals this Wednesday night, 8.30 Eastern on ABC. I'm going to break down the side, total, player props, let you know how to make some money. All that coming up free for Game 3 here in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Right back here on Wager Talk TV. And Celtics won Game 1 easily. It was a much tighter contest in Game 2. The Mavericks were up early, but Boston pulled ahead late. Landed right on the point spread, a plus 7. You know, the line was anywhere from 6.5 to 7.5. Consensus line was seven, and it landed right on seven. And look, conspiracy theories, we like to have fun with them in the NBA, but that was a little bit shady down the stretch. A no-call foul on that block in which his hand was hit. It was definitely a foul. Could have cut it to within a basket or so. Instead, it's a five-point game. Boston goes down, makes it seven. Dallas doesn't score. And then the Mavericks do not foul with 25 seconds remaining in the half court. They were hustling around. Boston did a good job passing, but once again, that was a little strange to me that Dallas didn't foul. We had the Mavericks plus seven. I was kind of happy with the push at that point because it was a 12-14 point game with only a few minutes to go, even though Dallas was covering the majority of the game. But once again, what are your thoughts on that finish? I know many of you love to say the fix was in. I'm not going to go that far, but I did think it was a little strange that Dallas didn't at least attempt to foul to maybe pull out a minor a minor miracle. Now they're down 0-2. As we know, home teams down 0-2 have been very strong bounce back plays in Game 3. The situation does favor the Mavericks here to bounce back, but there's a couple problems. First of all, Dallas um, Boston rather is the superior team in this series. Of course, we had a strong 5% best bet on the Celtics in Game 1 last Thursday. It's the uh, first and only time all NBA season I've had a 5% play. So it was the best NBA play I'd seen all season. Celtics won easily by 18. Because of that blowout, there was some value on Dallas in Game 2, and the line went from 6.5 up to 7. And that extra value made the difference, as I said, as it ended a push as opposed to a half-point loss against the spread. And historically, teams that get blown out in Games 1 do usually bounce back in Game 2, especially in the NBA Finals. And also, Boston had a tendency to take Game 2s off. Dallas had been very strong. So the Mavericks were in a good spot in Game 2, still couldn't get it done. Now they're in a good spot again here. But once again, the matchup favors Boston, and the odds makers have definitely over-adjusted this point spread. Dallas is now a a 1.5 to 2-point home favorite which is pretty crazy considering they're a six and a half to seven point dog in both road games. As is often the case in game three, the odds makers really inflate the first half, even first quarter numbers, because normally these teams come out very strong out of the gate. It makes sense. You're down 0-2, you're back at home in front of the home crowd, you come out strong. You could lay minus one and a half for the game, or you could lay um, basically minus two for the first half. And it uh, just shows, once again, the odds makers are factoring in this tendency that has become very apparent over the past decade. So first half line is higher than the full game line. First quarter line is minus 1, minus 115. First half is Dallas minus 2. Full game is Dallas minus 1.5. I don't disagree. I think if you play the Mavericks here, the first quarter or the first half is probably the way to go. Uh, first half minus 2 is a little pricey. Um, Mavericks first quarter minus 1 might actually be the best play here if you're going to back Dallas. Once again, it's tricky because the situation, just like Game 2, favors the Mavs, but I think the matchup for this series favors Boston. But if Dallas is going to get a game, it most likely is Game 3 here, and they most likely play well early on. Uh, So first quarter or first half is probably worth a look. Let's talk about the total. Haven't talked much about the total in the first two games. Uh, They were each priced... Um, around 214 and a half, 215 in game one, closed at 217. We saw some heavy sharp money on the over game one right before tip off, pushing it from 215 to 217. Game two, we didn't see quite as much money move. We, we saw it go from 214 and a half up to 215 on game day. Both games, of course, stayed under, and now we do see an adjustment down to about 213 here for the game three number, even 212 and a half in a lot of locations. Even though the first two games have been low scoring, uh, first game, game one, had only 196 points. Of course, that was a blowout, uh, so it wasn't really a true handicap as far as rescoring it. Game two had 203 points, and that was a little bit more of a true handicap because it was a competitive game. But both teams shot very poorly from three-point range on Sunday night. Dallas shot 23%. Boston shot 26%. 16 for 65 combined. When I did my rescore model, I got right around that 215 to 217 mark. Game one, we scored about 214 and a half. Once again, it was a blowout, though. Some key players are sitting in the fourth quarter. Two regular season games, of course, were much higher scoring. 217, uh, I'm sorry, not 200, 248 points and also 229 points. And those totals were priced at 240 and 238. 
So this 213, 212 and a half is obviously a lot lower than any total we've seen in this series. And I do think we're starting to get some value now with the over for a couple reasons. First of all, the line is lower. So there is value there just from the start. Uh, my rescores have still been higher than this so far in the playoffs. And also, I think Dallas has to start playing faster. They need to start mixing things up. It's not working in the half court. They're relying on Luka and nobody else. Kyrie is getting shut down by Holiday and White, two of the better defensive guards in the NBA. Dallas might need to push tempo more, and I think at home they'll be able to do it. And Boston is comfortable playing this way. Keep in mind, they swept the Indiana Pacers, one of the best offensive teams, one of the fastest paced teams in the Eastern Conference Finals. The last three games did stay under, but the first game had 225 points in that series. And Boston is comfortable picking up the pace. And with a 2-0 lead, they might let their guard down a little bit. So once again, would not be surprised to see the pace a little bit faster here. And now the line is lower. So I do think there's some value with the over in game number three. Once again, full game is 212.5. First half is 109.5, which makes the second half only 103. Um, Once again, I think this game could be a little higher scoring than expected. All right, let's look at some player props here on the way out. First of all, I want to let everybody know we do have a seven-day special right now at wagertalk.com. Seven days for just $77. Normally, it's $99 for seven days. You're getting an instant $22 discount, almost a 22% discount. But the better way to look at it is a three-day package is $69. You're getting a seven-day for $77. You're getting the extra four days for just $8 more. That's just $2 a day. Once again, seven days and nights of all sports. That includes, of course, the NBA Finals, my best bets for Game 3 on Wednesday, my best bets for Friday, also next Monday, if necessary, Game 5. So you get at least two, maybe three days of the NBA playoffs. You also get my baseball every day and night for seven straight days and nights. It's a seven-day all-access for just 77 No promo code needed. Works out to exactly $11 a day. That's about $5 a play. For my baseball and basketball best bets for the next week, check it out right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Don't forget also, I post a free baseball play each and every day. Great way to build your bankroll. Free baseball play every day on my page as well. Check it out right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's look at some player props on the way out. We've been talking about Porzingis' presence. He, of course, had 20 points in game one off the bench. Um, Game two the other night. Came off the bench with 23 minutes this time, and um, he is going to be more of a presence as the series goes on. Had just 12 points, only took seven shot attempts. He wasn't as much of a factor. I think he could be more of a factor here in Game 3. So Porzingis props over, uh, his points over, could be worth a look as we check the uh, current odds. It's around 13 and a half. Uh, Once again, he has had 20 and 12. Didn't take a lot of shot attempts in Game 2. I think he might get a few more shot attempts here in Game 3. Uh, Jason Tatum, 16 and 18. He stayed under in both games, and the Celtics have won both games, uh, but he's been contributing in other ways. He had double digit rebounds in game one, double digit assists in game two. So, once again, they can win without Tatum having to go over. So, I'm kind of neutral on him. Uh, Holiday had a huge game, 26 points. Drew Holiday, 11 for 14 shooting, though. Can't shoot much better than that. Holiday could be a candidate for regression here in game three. Problem is, he's only priced at 12.5 points. That's a really low number after putting up 26. He had only 12 in Game 1, 17, 14, 15, and 28 in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, So I do, I think, Holiday will regress. But once again, not much value going under just 12.5. So I'm going to stay neutral on Holiday. I was hoping to fade him. uh, But once again, the odds makers have done a pretty good job keeping that price low. Uh, Holiday and White also, as I mentioned, defensive guards who focus more on defense. And they really have been shutting down Kyrie Irving. Uh, Irving, once again, did not do too much. Only had 16 points, 7 for 18 shooting. He was 0 for 3 from 3-point range. His price is now 23.5. He's had only 16 and 12 in the first two games. Um, He's routinely scored below 22 in more than half the playoffs games this year. And with two good defensive guards on him. I do expect Dallas to play better in Game 3. I expect it to be a higher scoring game. So I'm going to stay off the Irving prop because I'm not in a hurry to play him over. Uh, he's just too unreliable. Luka Doncic, 20 different injuries, it seems. He had the knee, he had the ankle, and now it's a chest injury in the last game. And what does he do? He goes out, of course, and gets a triple-double. Um, so I'm in no hurry to fade Doncic. It's over or pass for the Doncic props. He ended up with 32 points in the last game. He's now priced at 32 and a half. He's had 32 and 30 in the first two. Really no value with the over on the points. So I think we got to look else with Doncic. Um, his rebound prop continues to have some value. Uh, total rebounds is priced at 9.5 again. 
He has had double-digit rebounds now in nine of the last 11 playoff games. So Doncic over nine and a half rebounds makes a lot of sense. They continue to price this, in my opinion, a little bit too low. Um, his assist prop is interesting. He only had one assist in game one. He had 11 assists in game two. It's priced at nine and a half. Um, but still, he's had five assists or less still in the three of the last five games. So I think Doncic's rebounds over nine and a half might be the safest way to play him um, as they're pretty much pricing uh, the points to perfection, which I don't disagree. He's really the only guy that's been scoring. And that's something else that has to be a huge concern if you're a Dallas Maverick fan or backer is that uh, Doncic's been playing lights out and they're still not winning. Uh, that's a bad sign. Irving really has to step up. Uh, we've talked about Daniel Gafford under. He had a big game, 13 points. He could regress a little bit. Um, Porzingis needs to play more minutes, though. Um, I do think Gafford and also uh, Lively are not going to have big series. Lively's had only two points in games one and two each, um, and he just doesn't take many shot attempts. He's only had four total shot attempts. So Derek Lively, uh, the second under points, under six and a half, probably worth a look. He's had only two points in each game. He's had six or less now in three of his last four playoff games. So Gafford under, Lively under points. I think you hit at least one of them. I mentioned that in game two. Gafford overachieved, but Lively stayed under and he split. So I think you go one and one at worst. Do have potential to still go 2-0 and by playing Gafford and Lively under. Uh, P.J. Washington's a guy I thought could have a good game. He did with 17 points in game number two, and he's going to have to hit some more threes. Uh, his three-point prop could be worth a look if you're able to find a three-point prop. I think uh, he's going to have to continue to take some threes. Uh, he was only 1 for 5 and 0 for 3. He's only 1 for 8 in this series. I think he'll shoot better, though, and get more threes at home. So Washington over could be worth a look. And uh, the other guys remaining, Derek Jones Jr. was 4 for 7, 11 points. Only had five points in game one. I'm pretty neutral on him. He's not really getting that many shot attempts. Uh, Max Kleber, by the way, no points. 0 for 4 shooting. I'm not even sure they're going to put a points prop on him. I'm seeing it right now around 3. Uh, Kleber, I think, will not play much at all. He's had only two points in the first two games. He's had three or less in every playoff game since the Minnesota series when he returned. And he had four in the last game against the Clippers on May 3rd. So once again, if you can get a Kleber prop under three and a half or less points. I think it's worth a look. I think his minutes are going to be extremely limited going forward. All right, that's a look at game three for you on Wednesday night, 830 Eastern on ABC. Comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. What are your thoughts on this game? Side, total player props. How are you attacking it? Does Dallas still have a chance or is this going to be a 4-0 sweep? Series prediction number of games is now less than 2-1 to one for it to be five games. So the odds makers are saying it is likely that Dallas will win one and in my opinion, it's obviously going to be this game because they are a one-and-a-half to two-point favorite. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. But comment below. I read all the comments, and I reply back here on Wager Talk TV. Thumbs up, like. Thumbs up does a great job keeping content free and plentiful. And don't forget, join the 157,000 subscribers for free by clicking subscribe, become part of the family, and also click the bell as well for instant alerts when not only this NBA playoff video goes up for each and every game, but also my daily free play videos in Major League Baseball. Click subscribe, click the bell for instant alerts. Also, you can follow me on Twitter on X, at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on X, Twitter. Also, find me on Instagram along with Wager Talk. And don't forget, seven days for just 77 that's $11 a day, about $5 a play, gets my Game 3 best bet for Wednesday, my Game 4 best bet for Friday, Game 5 best bet next Monday, if necessary, and also my baseball best bets each and every day for seven straight days and nights. About $5 a play with that seven-day all-access special. No promo code needed on my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Don't forget, I'm number one this year in the NBA, and I'm number one all-time in Units 1 in the NBA in the history of wagertalk.com. And while you're there, check out the free daily baseball plays on my page with analysis, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Enjoy the games. I'll be back with your Game 4 preview on Friday. I'm also hosting Wager Talk today this Friday. Baseball show every day at 2 o'clock Eastern live on Wager Talk TV. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for more great baseball and basketball previews coming up next.